Hey friends, I've had a few people make comments on my Christmas tree videos to maybe try making a Christmas tree out of shells instead of crushed glass. So that's what today's video is going to be about. So follow along and let's get started. So instead of using a piece of wood like I normally do, like this, I'm going to use a picture frame. And this is a picture frame that I picked up at a thrift shop for a couple bucks. I have already removed the backing. And although I was really, really careful to, this is plastic too, I was really careful removing all of the, um, the little like little nails um, I still damage the plastic a little bit um, but the nice thing about this frame is that the glass is already secured so I'm not gonna have to use any kind of glue or anything so the glass is not gonna come out now once I'm done I'm gonna put the shells on this side but when I'm done I'm gonna take some um, I don't know some kind of ribbon or burlap or some kind of fabric and cover all of this up that way somebody could use it on a window and you 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 know you can see both sides if they wanted to i don't know if they would necessarily want to see the back side with glass it would be pretty but i don't know if you know the back side of shells would even interest somebody i don't know We'll see. We'll see what it looks like, but I am going to finish the back. So what I do want to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and clean both sides. I'm not going to paint the frame. I really like the color of this frame. It's just kind of has a nice wood grain and gold edging. All right. So I want to go ahead and mark where where the trunk is going to be. And I think I'm going to use a piece of driftwood. Nice piece of driftwood. It's a little bit big. But I find this stuff all the time. But we'll just use that. I'm going to go ahead and attach it with some Allen's mm, tacky glue. And you can use E6000, but I'm going to be going back over this with resin underneath to attach everything. I wanted it in kind of in the center. I kind of eyeball it. And then I need a star. I have this star, but it's broken. I have another one. This one might be a little bit big. Is that one? Then, so this Christmas tree, I think I want to make kind of fat, like to fill the space here. I don't know. I think that would look fine, but this might be a little bit big. I wonder if I could put the star up here. I think that would be fine. I have so many shells, so many shells. I'm just gonna kind of start laying out um, you know, just what I think would look good. Like I said, I have so many. I think the larger ones do better on the bottom. This one's pretty. And then I can kind of put smaller ones just intermingled like on top 
I have a lot of these already. shells like that. That one might be too big though. On this little one. I've quit picking these up because I don't really, I don't know, I have, like I used to have so many and so I've used them all and now that I don't pick them up anymore, I don't have any. All right, that should get us started. So this whole process is really kind of like putting a puzzle together. You're just working with the different pieces and trying to figure out where each piece best fits. And it's, it's like a jigsaw puzzle or a Tetris. Um, I am the queen of Tetris. I love that game. Do y'all remember that game? I think it was on a, I don't know, was it a Game Boy? I don't even remember what, it was a handheld game and I was the queen of Tetris. And I'm also the same way when it comes to packing a car for a trip. Just stand back and let me do it. I promise you it may take a while, but I am the queen of packing for a trip. So this shell game is just the same. I'm trying to find the pieces that best fit and it makes, you know, makes sense. Where things make sense, filling in gaps with smaller shells. And I did find out that putting the, the bigger shells on the bottom really is like your base. So the big shells on the bottom is your base and then the smaller shells as the second layer and then well, the medium shelves is the second layer, and then the smaller shelves to kind of fill in the gaps. And so now you can really, really see the, tr the tree coming together. It's all filling in nicely. I think that's perfect. If I add too much more, it's just going to be a little bit too, too crazy. So I'm going to mix up a liquidy split for this one because it is a facet. All right, I've mixed up my resin. I've mixed 60 milliliters and I'm using the KS Resin Liquidy Split because it's a facet and it's nice and thick and I won't get, I don't think I will get the runniness that I would get if I use the other stuff. So I'm not worried about bubbles, but I am worried about it running. But it is what it is, and here we go. I'm just basically I'm just gonna drizzle it on, but and paying attention to these cracks between the shells, and I'm really hoping that by doing it this way, that we will the resin will seep in in between the shells attach on to the glass and it will stick all right that's the first kind of the first pass maybe some little bitty shells maybe just kind of Start building it that way. I wonder if I should do it now. Just maybe just as I go. So adding the shells one by one is a little time consuming, but um it just, you know, it seems to, to work out better. That way I'm, I know exactly where I'm adding the shells and I'm just identifying where the gaps are 
and where I need maybe just a little bit more color. Now I'm adding on the teeny tiny shells that I have picked through, um, I found these at the beach, at my beach, and I just I work really quickly with my resin and I can get these little pieces in there. Resin is already getting thick and it is heating up. These little tiny pieces are just filler, but they're also really cute too. And I think they will, they will be fine. I'm not going to pour any more on here. I'm going to let this cure and then I will come back and um, probably overnight. And I know, I know I'm going to have to, to get along the edges where I have some gaps. I'm not quite sure how to get the resin in between there without, I don't have a pipette and I don't really have a way of tilting this so that I don't lose my form. But I think in a couple of hours, I may be able to do that. It just, is that going to shift too much? See, I just don't want to do that. I want to wait until it's, I want to wait until it's cured and then I can, that way I can tip it. So I'll let that cure. This is a pretty shell. Maybe the next one. Okay. So this is, this is what the back looks like. And you can see that there is resin in exactly the places that it needs to be. It's holding all these shells down. And it's really, I mean, I don't need any more resin on it. It's holding everything down where, where it needs to be. Also, a hoarder of ribbon. I really, really, really love this ribbon. It's cute, but it's not festive. This is cute, but the pattern is all wrong. It's Bob Hope. Advertised in Life Magazine, 49 cents is half price. Family size bargain reel. And it's never been used. It's brand new. This is a absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ribbon. I don't know where I got this. I'm pretty sure I got this at the yard sale. Look at how gorgeous that pattern is. This would be cute too, but it's a little bit big. I think this would be cute on the back, but it's again, it's not wide enough. And I got this at the same time that I got this. I, and this is a nice festive Christmassy pattern. Poinsettias and little holly boughs and candles. And this may fit just perfectly. Look at that, it does. So this is what I'm going to use, I think, to go around the edge of my frame. And I need to figure out what to do around here. I may need to take this off and then screw it back in. I also need to figure out a use for this one. This has got little reindeer on it. Oh, I need to figure out a project to use that. Give my heat gun a chance to heat up here. My plan is to go from one end to the next. And I'm gonna fold this over. I'm going to glue this on first and then fold it over. That way we have a nice even end. how clean that is. I probably should have ironed this first, but 
<clears throat> I don't know if that would have hurt it. I'm going to run a bead just along the edge, a very small bead. And now I'll go ahead and do one here too. And then stretch this nice and tight. Just a little bit of a lip. And then don't burn your fingers. Cover that up anyway. Now I'm going to do the same down here. I'm sure if y'all can see this. Yeah, I don't know if I could have ironed this. The iron may have damaged the fabric. So it's a, the fabric is a little bit wrinkled, but I just, you know, I don't want to take the chance that I would damage the fabric because it may be silk. I'm not sure. The fabric itself may be silk. So, but as long as I stretch it nice and tight, it flattens out. All right. So I'm going to cut this one right there. <clears throat> If you can see that, what I'm doing here. And try to get a close up right there. So I'm folding, folding the ribbon back and just making a nice smooth. And I'm rolling it over on itself. There we go. Right. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to repeat. Here, just repeat on this end. <clears throat> we'll go up and then we'll go up on this side. So, one little bead. You know, I could use the paper strips or something different for the back, but I just think I want to use my ribbon because I've been holding on to it forever. So why not just use this? I could use burlap, I guess, but I don't have any burlap ribbon. Right, go ahead and. <clears throat> Could use glue, like Elmer's glue, I guess. Okay. 
and then we'll just fold it. Oh, you can't see that. There we go. Not. Oh my gosh, I thought I cracked it. <clears throat> thought I broke it. I did not though. And I'm going to do this in now. Oh, snap. Can't even tell. Hide all the ugly. And then we salvage this beautiful frame. There we go. There is our pretty, this is the back of the frame, believe it or not, with our, my vintage ribbon. And I'm gonna, while I've got it flipped over, I'm gonna go ahead and get pretty shell frame, shell Christmas tree. some resin there. Look how pretty that is. It's just perfect like it is. I love it. I love it. So this is definitely going to go into my art show booth at my next show in a couple weeks. Maybe I'll make another one. All right, thanks for watching. I hope that you learned something with this tutorial and decide to give it a try. Explore your journey. Thanks so much, friends. Bye.